Alrighty guys, so since the last time I saw you and now, we've been smashed with events. So March has been hectic. First it was Brisbane Fall Drive Show, then we took it to Matsuri, and we've literally just arrived back from Rocky Nats like half an hour ago. I'm absolutely buggered. But we just got to give you an update on the car. So we obviously didn't get quite get it finished um, for the Brizzy show. It wasn't running, wasn't moving. Um, we pushed as hard as we could, but just so much to do. Obviously that last 10% of a build is always the hardest, but we got it there. Matsuri was the same deal. We really didn't get much done during the week because we had so much planning for that event. We've got a little bit more work done to Rocky Nats. Um, I'm going to take you through a bit of what's been going on with the motor. Um, I have to actually do it again because it's still not fixed, but we'll run you through that. Um, we did get it moving, so we got the drive shaft in. It does move, but we had dramas with the brake boost. So literally the morning of the event going to Rocky Nats, I had a mobile guy here from NZ doing hydraulic fittings to try and get that booster working, but it wouldn't flow fluid. So we had brakes, but they're only mechanical brakes, and it ran okay. And then the last day of Rocky Nats, we couldn't get it started. Um, it's either low on fuel and not picking it up, um, or the battery was just too dead because we don't have the alternator hooked up. So every time we ran it and started it, it just flattened that battery more and more and it just didn't have enough to fire. So we've got it back here and I'm gonna go through pretty much what we need to do the fix six thing, do some work on it, and then we're gonna get onto what this, uh, the title of this video is about, run through some of that, and then uh, pretty much show you what's coming next with this car. So let's get into it. All right, so I'm gonna start with pulling this front off. Um, so the three major things that everyone probably heard about at the shows was it moving, stopping, and running properly. So we got it moving, we got a drive shaft. We haven't got it stopping yet, so this is that hydraulic booster we were talking about. The brakes are in, the brakes are bled, they're fine. It's just this booster. Um, we couldn't use a vacuum booster, we didn't have the room there with those headers. And being supercharged and with the turbos, you're not always getting vacuum anyway, so I went with a hydraulic option. That should be fixed soon, we're just waiting on uh, an extra hose to hopefully fix that. The last drama, this is the third time lucky, is the intake manifold. So I'm basically gonna have to rip off all the top, the supercharger, the manifold off, and we're still having dramas with sealing that gasket. So I'll get it all apart now, and then run you through what we've done, and what my last port of call is to get this thing fixed, so it'll actually run properly, because before it wouldn't even idle, it sucked that much air um, through a vacuum leak that it idled at like three, four grand. Now it's idling, which is good, but it's still not holding water. So let's get it apart and have a look. This will tell us what the goal is with this manifold because it's sealing air because it's idling properly now, but the issue we're having, it was pushing water into the block. Now over the weekend, it was squirting water out of the one of the bolt holes. So it was coming out, but I want to know whether it's still going into the sump. So it's been sitting for about 24 hours. We'll take this sump plug off. And if water's been settled in there, water will come out first followed by oil and it will definitely be milky. So that's, that's not too bad. The first time I did it was about five or six liters of pure water, but this isn't pure water, it's still oil. So I don't think it's too bad. We're getting close. <laughs> but I'll jump up on the manifold and show you what the go is there. All right, here we're up, we're up here. This bolt, I think it was this one that was squirting heaps of water out of it. So when it got hot, it literally was shooting out, making it look like there was a massive water leak. Well, because there was. So it's this surface in here. Now once I pull it off, I'll tell you why that's not sealing. But this is the next thing to get off. And these bolts are an absolute pain in the butt to get to. So I'll spend the next half hour taking these off. We'll see what we're dealing with. One week later. Alrighty, so this is what we're dealing with here. This has been the biggest pain in my ass ever since we built this thing. And I've mentioned it in other episodes. But the drums with making a manifold is, especially being out of aluminium, is it's gonna warp a lot with welding. So when Paul first welded it, we had both flanges bolted to the head. He TIG welded it and then let it cool, but it's obviously still got a bit of tension when you bolt it down. So you really want it to sit relaxed on the heads and perfectly sealed. Now that's like pretty tricky to get right. So we then got it machined. I got it fully machined at the engine shop. They put a deck across it. And he ended up having to take about two mil off to get it flat. Now that's quite a lot of material. That's about a gasket thickness. So then I had to go and use thicker gaskets 
we cross hatch both of the surfaces and then use the ton of goo. Now it looks like it's sealed pretty well, but for some reason the material that we used isn't very resistant to water because we plugged up a couple of holes and it looks like it's basically soaked through them. So like I said, it sounded like it was sealing air, but not sealing water. So I need to go on the hunt for a gasket that is more suited to getting wet because there's obviously water flowing through here. And then we can try again. So we're gonna get the right thickness. The silicon looks right. looks like that's actually connecting pretty well. The last stuff I used, it wasn't really sticking to the alley. So I'm happy with the silicon. We just gotta get the right gasket. That'll hopefully solve the problems. So let's move on to some questions. Actually, it's not really questions. It's just a bunch of hate comments. All right, we're getting into the title of this video, responding to hate comments on the XC. Yeah, look at that. It's a little bit hypocritical of me because to be honest, I've always preached that no matter what you build, don't listen to other people. But in this case, I thought it'd be a bit of a laugh because it doesn't really bother me. And I think a lot of the comments were kind of said before the thing was finished. And to be honest, the last three or four events I've ever been to, there's been no negative comments said directly to me. So it's either they've kind of seen what I've been doing and it sort of made more sense now, or it's just keyboard warriors. So let's just rip straight into it and see what people reckon about the XC. Now, I was gonna go forwards in time, but I might flip that around because there was actually a couple of posts put up recently um, from Summer Nats and Street Machines. So they saw it at the Rocky Nats events and um, we're planning to take it down to uh, street machine. So this is an event where there's like enthusiasts absolutely everywhere and you knew these were the kind of people that I'd piss off building this car. So um, the main thing is obviously wrecking a good car. There's a lot of comments about oh you've destroyed an authentic car or what a waste and to be honest I did it to an absolute piece of shit. We bought this body for two thousand dollars. It has rust all through the floor, all through the seals and you can still see that. Like I haven't done it to a good car because I knew I was going to kind of chop it up a lot to make this thing happen. So it's definitely not a good body. That's even why we've left some of the dents in there. It's a bit of a, a bit of a history for that car. We didn't want to completely repair everything. It's sort of just shown the raw kind of Mad Max style of it. Let's rip into some of these. So this is from Burnout Masters. So Burnout Masters put a post up. I don't even know if I'm gonna hide the people's names on this or not, but anyway, some guy said, walk directly past it. Only cool feature is the twin turbos. My honest, humble review is pointless build. Ship the thing to America, it'll fit in over there. Dodge your roll cage too. So this is probably a very common theme. It is a very pointless build, but it's one of those things that had no purpose and I still don't know what it's for but it was kind of something I had in my head and I wanted to sort of see what it would look like in real life. It's really just a piece of art, um, it's something to take to shows and events. People are like, oh it's not going to work off road or it's not going to go fast, it won't do burnouts, this and that and it wasn't for any of that. I think the main thing after finishing this build, it was more about the experience and learning things along the way. A lot of people out there can relate to the fact that it's more about building the car than the end result. So keep that in mind with this whole thing because I learned a lot of new skills. There's a lot of TIG welding, even just like honing the skills on the MIG welding. We bought a plasma cutter for this build, so that was a whole new thing to do. Tube bender, I'd used none of this before. So end of the day, even if the car isn't everyone's cup of tea, it helped me learn a lot more skills about fabricating because I haven't really got any background in that. It's all sort of self-taught. Um, this one was a, actually this one was too good to pass up. So I'm gonna go through the whole conversation. So. Uh, this guy said, don't just take a look close at it. Couldn't believe the heavily rusted steel that was used in the chassis. I had a look at the Brizzy show. Understand it's home built, but come on, new steel wouldn't have broken the bank. So this is pretty funny because there's a couple of guys in the comments that sort of went back and forwards with this. I didn't even have to say anything. Um, some guy was like, watch the YouTube channel. It's all new steel that he used in the build. Um, the steel that looked like, uh, looked like with my own eyes had been sitting around for about five years. So I don't care what they try and show on the video. Um, and then someone took a screenshot showing rusty steel um, and he said, uh, Brent, this was clearly after it had been wire wheeled. Um, I work with steel every day, it's literally my job. Oh, so we've got a professional on the case, this is great. I know rusted steel when I see it. I really don't understand why you're arguing over someone's rusted steel work when I've seen it in real life and provided evidence to contradict your original comment. People get so butt hurt, this is quite fascinating. You haven't proven anything, except that you're arguing about something that is irrelevant to the fact that they built it and you didn't. Yeah, true facts. Um, 
Were you dropped as a child? We have proven what others denied in the comments after I made an original comment not to look too close. It's very much a SEMA build. Now, the reason behind the rusty chassis was we did build it about three years ago and the build got held up. I had to move it to a new location where I didn't have a shed and it sat outside for about two years in the rain unpainted. So that's where the rust came from. Um, but it was surface for us, we wired it back and got it painted. But like I said, it ain't no show build. All right, we're gonna go back into some that I say. This is quite funny that I've actually saved some hate comments. All right, this is one that uh, really tickled everyone for a bit. Um, obviously, we'll talk about Bluetooth drive shafts. So it had no drive shafts and we couldn't, actually the Farrow's Customs who built the shaft actually got it finished the day or the morning of bumping of the Brizzy show. So we just missed out getting it in the car, but the rear shaft was built. Um, and we were driving the thing around at Rocky Nats. Front shafts, it's never gonna work because of just the hectic angle that it's on. So we're either thinking of doing like a little chain drive or whatever, but it honestly doesn't need it because the people that do think I'm out here to rock crawl this thing have rocks in their head because it's not gonna happen because the cam and the blower and the way that that motor will hunt forward, you won't be able to drive it in low range because it would be just impossible to keep control of. So no, it hasn't been built as a rock crawler. So you can get that out of your head. This is a, someone put up a lovely story with some ticks and crosses. Apparently I got an A for very stupid high center of gravity. Yeah, but I got it high. So this is, I, I think the thing is people are so stuck in the ways of building a car for the street, for off-roading, for a purpose. When you try and do something different, it just, their mind can't comprehend. But yes, it's got a high center of gravity. I didn't build it to be stable. Uh, lowers on top of the axle, same deal. We had our lower arms below and they were like on a stupid angle, so I raised them up so it kind of made sense, looked right. No, it's not the best for all your anti-squat, blah, 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 diff roll, all that. But that's not what I built it for. For up travel, um, that was an actual up on my part because the width of the diff, I built the chassis to match the car and then when we decided what diffs to put under it, I didn't have enough narrowness there, so to put them any higher, they would have um, fouled on the chassis on up travel. Um, so we're either going to go smaller shocks on the front or have to figure out, probably have to notch the chassis, but I just didn't have time to sort that out. Um, panned hard angle, this is also one that I, it kind of changed halfway through the build. So I originally was going to do just a normal steering setup and you're going to have a pan hard, but then halfway through I discovered you could run hydraulic steering with a ram and that is completely eliminates your drag link. And now, if I knew that at the start, we would have just four linked the whole front end and got rid of that pan hard. But again, that was already kind of built into the project and then the steering was done afterwards. So that's why it's like that. Um, and then the last one, it says 12 year olds love that shit. That's sick. That's why I put eyeballs on the thing. So the thing with this car, it's meant to be for everyone. And honestly, especially at Rocky Nats, it was a huge family event and there were kids coming up left, right and center that loved the car. And that's what we like to see. The younger generation getting into cars, um, and yeah, oh, I missed one. Hella mad down travel for Insta photos. Yeah, she flexed great. Right, on that same photo, there was a ton of comments about my bent shock. Same deal, it was the first time we'd flexed it up and the top mounts, we found out we needed more clearance on there. So it wasn't until after I'd edited the photo and actually posted it, someone pointed that out and we just needed to trim off a little bit on that top mount and it fixed that. But again, everyone thinks it's just always gonna be like that, but no, it was a quite a simple fix with a bent shock. Disney cease and assist is on its way. That's from the eyeballs. Did Disney make cars? Is that a Disney movie? I don't know. It's not really like cars. The idea was to have the eyeballs like the Cars cartoon, but we changed it so much. We made them black, we made them angry looking, so it's kind of far from that. Um, it's gonna be funny watching the rear diff tear itself out. I'm actually very curious about this too, because it's all my own welding. We literally made our own brackets as well. Um, and because the way I've set the arms and the pinion angle and all that, I'm curious to see whether it wants to kind of just roll itself under, which on high horsepower, it probably would. But the way that this thing runs, it's probably gonna be fine, but I'm curious to see what will happen there. This is all about the motor. So this is when I first put up stories about the two turbos and the supercharger. Again, it's for the idea of it, it's for the look, it's for trying something different. It does not function properly. People that have done this before know this. Superchargers need a lot of air capacity, a lot of air volume initially. The turbos are gonna be a big block for that, not letting the supercharger suck enough air, then the turbos take over and it makes the supercharger irrelevant. So they are literally fighting each other 
Um, but the way I've got around this is there's holes in the bottom of the manifold to let the supercharger suck all the time. And at the same time, the boost from the turbos gets to blow out of there. And also on the external gates, I've set them to a really low spring pressure. It's about three pounds, so the turbos gate immediately. So essentially the turbos aren't messing with the engine, it purely runs off of the blower. And that just makes tuning so much easier because the uh, MAF sensor on the carbies gets the boost reference from the manifold um, and the turbos will mess with all those settings. So it's basically supercharged, not turbocharged, but they do spin, make a whole lot of noise and that's why they're there. Um, same thing, good luck actually getting this to work. I've built a setup like this before on a rotary, that's pretty sick. And the blower vanes just slow down the airspeed from the turbos and don't really do anything. Ended up just stripping the vanes out um, so it had the looks. Essentially, same sort of thing. I do, I've actually seen a couple of cars at Rocky Nats come back for a second year. They're actually burnout cars. Um, there was a six cylinder barrow that had a supercharger and a turbo. They seem to make it work, so it sort of can be done, but it's, yeah, it's not really a useful thing to do. Um, on the note of power, um, people are like, oh, how much power is it gonna make? This motor, I struggled to find a 454, and the only one I found in WA was two bolt mains. So it's only got two bolt, to so it's only got two bolt main bearing caps on it. Um, so we're never gonna be able to put a heap of power through it. Um, I didn't forge the internals for that reason. Um, and I didn't wanna spend a heap of money on a stupidly expensive high horsepower motor for something that's in this. Um, where it's not going to be like used for drag racing, burnouts, all that kind of stuff. So it's never going to make stupid power. It's just going to look like it does make a lot of power. Oh, here we go. Real questionable welds. Hopefully you're only putting a 10 horsepower Honda motor in it. Well, we just spoke about that. I'd say it's maybe 20 horsepower. So we're right there. This thing is going to be so unpopular. The purists are going to hate it. Um, should be good fun. Can't wait to see the rig get sent. Uh, like I said, it rustled a few feathers. So. Any publicity is good publicity, but I was worried about what people would say at an authentic event like Summer Nats or Rocky Nats. Um, and the response was pretty good. A lot of enthusiasts there. Um, there are a lot of nice XE Falcons there and they can see that this one wasn't a good one to restore. So they kind of understood what it did there. Uh, generally curious as why the coilover and shock mounts on the chassis are so low. Are you building it for a show car or big lift? So yeah, it was obviously get the big lift. And like I said, I couldn't get the angle in right if I put them any higher. Um, so it's just a ton of work to re-notch the chassis and it just wasn't really worth doing when it doesn't need to operate properly. Uh, so this one's funny, I do severely hope this never goes onto a public road, not for your safety but for everyone else's. Please take some of the advice a lot of people have given you and start over correctly. I don't know who out there thinks this thing was ever going to go on the street, it's clearly a show car. It goes on the back of a truck everywhere. Um, maybe, maybe this guy's from America, who knows, because they can drive anything over there on the street. But no, it's not going on a public road, so you can just uh, be safe there. Uh, since you welded up the doors, how the f are you going to get in it? So that was trying to get the idea of it looking how I wanted from that original render. I wanted it two-door, but it was a four-door. I didn't want to destroy a nice two-door coupe. So we welded all the doors up, and to get in, you climb up the tire, get on the step, and basically hop in through the window. So you've got to be pretty agile to get in the thing, but it hasn't been too bad. It's a little bit annoying when you want to work on it, like when I'm doing stuff for the pedals and that, but other than that, driving around's fine. Sam, put the welder down and step away slowly. I laughed at that one. You know Zane Nelson? Is that Zane with the Hilux? Yeah. yeah. Hey, shout out to Zane. I know Zane, he's all right. Look, end of the day, it was a car that came pretty close to how I wanted the original render. Um, it's still not finished, so yeah, people saying this doesn't work, that doesn't work, it hardly runs. We see it get pushed um, from the show, so we've got to get the alternator going because it ran the battery flat. So I'd rather take the car to these events, uh, let people see it, rather than hide it in the shed till every little last nut and bolt's finished. So we're going to get it sorted. The next event will be probably Red Center Nats. We're going to, actually, there's a few four drive shows. It'll be going to every four drive show around the country this year. Uh, Adelaide, Perth, Melbourne, Sydney, um, Red Center Nats, Summer Nats, if I can get an entry, because I think I missed out on the entries on that. And we've been to Rocky Nats. So after all those hate comments, I won an award. Where's my award? I'll go get it. Here it is, I won an award. <laughs> it is the top exhibition vehicle which I presume is just like a participation award. So there you go, and I won some money with this too, maybe a $100 voucher. So go put that in your pipe and smoke it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>